Hi, thanks, Becky. Uh, thank you to the League for inviting me to be here. Uh, this is an important topic for many people. Uh, it's a uh, main focus in my life and work clearly here in Naperville. Uh, so I'm glad to be here and uh, look forward to sharing some of the work we're doing. We'll start, I believe, with a quick poll. Uh, and it is uh, focused on what our participants consider to fall under the umbrella of sustainability. Ben, I need to tell you that I am having trouble again launching the poll, so I apologize. Okay. Um, shall I just proceed then with the presentation and, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about some of the polling questions at the end with question and answer? Yeah, I think that, yes, good idea. Okay, great. Well, thanks. We're, we're going to go ahead, folks. Um, so I will start with. Uh, a pretty, pretty well received definition of sustainability among many people, uh, and it it's it sort of comes down to the concept of three fundamental pillars. Uh, many people refer to it as the triple bottom line. Uh, people use the three P's: people, planet, profit. Other people use the three E's: uh, people would be equity, planet would be environment, profit would be economy. Um, so we'll go with the three P's for for tonight. Uh, so first, something that is sustainable is beneficial to us and our communities, the people. Second, it's good for the environment, the planet. And third, it makes economic sense, the profit element. And uh, the city of Naperville believes that taking a sustainable approach to how we provide services uh, and, and deal with our stakeholders will help ensure a, a higher quality of life for, for current and also future generations. So I'm just gonna go through a quick uh, overview of some of the past accomplishments. As, as many of you may know, but some might not, I'm relatively new here with the city and my position is, is brand new as of last year. I started in mid-June of 2021. So here's a quick rundown. I'm gonna start from the bottom. So we work toward the present. So in 2016, the city won the Illinois Governor's Sustainability Award. And some of the programs and policies that led to that were uh, the water leak detection survey that our water utility runs saves a lot of water every single year. Uh, we opened up our household hazardous waste facility so residents can uh, safely and properly dispose of, of those household items that shouldn't go in the trash or recycling, uh, the recycling cart program, and, and much more. Uh, moving on to 2019, the city was awarded with the Soul Smart Silver uh, designation, which the Soul Smart is a program that was started by the uh, Environmental Protection Agency to recognize organizations that make it easier to uh, get to a place where residents and, and businesses and, and other organizations can install renewable energy through solar panels. In 2020, uh, we opened our compressed natural gas or CNG fueling station in partnership with Trillium and uh, through also a, a long-term contract with our waste and recycling provider, which is Groot Industries. And just in December, the group won an award from Chicago Area Clean Cities Coalition for public-private partnership. And then in, in 2021, right before I started, we cut the ribbon on a one megawatt solar installation at the Springbrook Water Reclamation Plant. Um, so one megawatt is roughly equivalent to being enough power for uh, about 180 average Naperville homes. Okay, uh, one of our main partnerships in this space is with the Naperville Environment and Sustainability Task Force, otherwise known affectionately as NEST. Uh, the group was founded in 2018 by concerned Naperville citizens and, and people who have experience working in the field, at, whether as engineers, attorneys, uh, contractors, et cetera, educators. And the group came together to work to create a climate action plan to help Naperville on the journey. Uh, the membership, they include, you know, it, it ebbs and flows probably more now than in the past, but at least 50 volunteers. And in 2019, Naperville City Council recognized NEST as an official city task force. So in that capacity, NEST works with uh, council, leadership, with city staff, and, and provides input, guidance, 
ideas for how we can um, you know, be more sustainable. And just last year in August, Nest released the Sustainable Naperville 2036 report, which is uh, voluminous. It's almost 300 pages, including all of the appendices and the data. Uh, but it's really a, um, it's a broad overview of what the city can be working on, but with very specific recommendations for strategies in, uh, across the board. And that's a link to, to the report. It's too big to email. So you've got to go to Google, Google Drive to, uh, to take a look. So in response to the release of that report and, and really the first couple months of my job here, I was working closely with Nest on digesting the different uh, recommendations and, and then taking that and working with our municipal leaders, uh, city manager's office and, and directors of departments and other subject matter experts to figure out, all right, how can we make this make sense for city staff and leadership, but also city council and get their approval to get to work. And the Nest report is broken roughly into these six main categories, uh, municipal leadership, energy, building and development, transportation, mobility, natural resources, and waste and recycling. And on the city's website, uh, you can find uh, what the result of all of those conversations were, was, which is the city's uh, sustainability work plan to help us guide our work. So we'll start with section one, municipal leadership. And for all of these, I'm just gonna give a few kind of high level items that I'm working on, others are working on, and uh, just let you know where we are, what we're, where we're moving. Uh, so initially, one of my first tasks was to create uh, a cross-departmental sustainability team to, to help inform me, uh, but also for me to work with, to ensure that we're aligned across departments, that we, you know, because so many of these different types of programs and policies operate in different ways, say in public works versus uh, the finance department or IT. Um, we're working with a new cohort of city employees that are part of the Emerging Leaders Program. Now this, this is a program that they apply for and it's young up and coming um, employees and it's a, a longer, it's between, depending on the year, between 12 and, and 18 months, but it's a combination of academic study and mentorship, and then also real wor world projects. And so I'm working with them. Uh, they, they just started a couple months ago, and we are gonna be working together to create a broad outreach and engagement campaign to support sustainability, uh, messaging to different stakeholders and figure out how we can work with them. And third, we're working to develop a, an updated online reporting methodology so we can measure and track and then share what we're working on from, from a metrics standpoint. Moving on to energy. So one of the great things about Naperville is we've got a very robust renewable energy program uh, that is supported by utility ratepayers uh, who voluntarily contribute to a renewable energy fund that is then used to help uh, residents and businesses to install solar power with, with real incentives. Next is uh, we want to continue to engage the community in, in working on energy efficiency and conservation. We've got a lot of measures, uh, financial incentives to reduce the, the basic demand for electricity and natural gas, therefore uh, reduction in emissions. And then third, uh, we continue to follow new technologies as they develop, whether it's uh, better technology in a new solar panel or a battery energy storage technology to, to harness that energy and use it maybe when the sun isn't shining. Moving on to building and development. So we have a, a department, it's called, we refer to it as TED, it's short for Transportation Engineering and Development. And they are very involved in most anything that happens in Naperville from an infrastructure, uh, building, permitting, uh, anything to do with roadways and transportation. Um, and they continue to monitor emerging technologies, new policies, they stay on top of uh, new regulations, say related to building performance standards, uh, energy efficiency measures, and, and continue to try and stay on top of that and make sure Naperville is on it. Uh, again, with TED, 
Uh, they're involved in major new roadway development and major redevelopment efforts. And we utilize a complete streets policy in those, those projects when, when we are helping design, comment on, uh, permit. And, and what complete streets refers to is it's really looking at who are all the users of this, of this roadway, of, the, of this stretch of road that we're working on. So not only vehicular traffic, but also um, mass transit, public transportation, buses, trains, but also bicycles, pedestrians. We want it to be a, a, a usable and safe area for all who are involved and will be using that, that, that space. And third, this was uh, working with Nest. We work to educate developers during uh, their concept meetings when they come in to be permitted. Uh, Nest generated, uh, drafted a, a letter to these developers to recommend different types of sustainable building practices that they can utilize as they move on and, and move into design construction. And um, we've also, as part of that letter, share contact information for the, uh, the building and development committee with Nest for any further questions or further engagement. Um, this was gonna be a place for another poll. So we'll informally just ask folks to think about a couple of things. Um, how do you prefer moving around Naperville? Uh, do, do you bike and walk for pleasure? Do you, do you bike to work? Uh, do you basically drive everywhere? Is that a necessity or a preference? And then second, kind of expand that out. We, we are in the Chicago metro area. And uh, you know, when, when going to and from Chicago, do you use public transportation on a regular basis? Uh, do you only use it when you've got car problems or do you never use public transit and you prefer to drive? So just, just keep those in the back of our mind. Ben, yeah. uh, why, don't, why don't we do this, that, uh, for those polls very informally? Um, many of you who are listening know about the reaction button that is on the bottom of your bottom tray. So if we could just do the poll and you could raise your hand to answer those various questions. So let me, um, uh, uh, that the poll, um, how do I enjoy getting around Naperville? And then if you would raise your hand, if you bike for pleasure. Let's, let's see. Wow, we have a lot of people who like to bike for pleasure. Pretty interesting. Okay. The second question, I walk for pleasure. If you would also raise your hand for that. Yeah. This is wonderful. We have a lot of walkers here in Naperville and I have to say that I am also uh, a walker. We're very fortunate to have wonderful paths. Um, but the third question, um, says, I would walk and bike more if I felt safer and there were more paths. Again, a raise of hands um, for this. Uh, we're getting, yeah, we're getting a lot of hands raised also. Okay, um, the last question on this was, um, uh, a uh, nope, I drive everywhere, but it seems like almost everybody either walks or bikes. So I think we can kind of skip that that question. Um, and then Ben, is it okay if we go um, for the other one about uh, public transportation and, and run it the way we've been running it? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. So the question is, I um, use public transportation. The first answer is regularly. So raise your hand if you use public transportation regularly. Wow, I don't see, I don't, ah, I see three people who say that they use public transportation regularly. Okay, the next question is, I use public transportation when I Okay, um, 
a few more um, yeses. <laughs> and then the um, third question is, I use public transportation when my car is broken. <laughs> oh, see, I see a few people. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. So anyway, it seems like um, in the audience tonight, we have a lot of walkers, um, we have bikers, and we have no um, uh, uh, no one who drives everywhere. So thank you for uh, participating and letting us know um, uh, how you choose to get around Naperville. Yeah, thank you very much. Um... I'm going to see if I can advance my slide. There we go. So next, we're going to talk about transportation and mobility. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, one of the things that the city has, has long supported and, and promoted and continues to is the Safe Routes to School program uh, for, for walking, but also biking. We want kids to be able to, and their families when they're involved as well, be able to safely uh, enjoyably get to and from school. Uh, not only is it about safety, which is which is paramount, but it's also to encourage healthy behavior and mental health, getting outside, moving, getting some fresh air. Uh, we're currently working with uh, several groups, uh, including Nest as a formative member. Uh, we just had a meeting last night with, with a couple members of the Transportation Advisory Board to get their input. Uh, and we'll continue to work with them. And, and we're also working with uh, some folks at North Central College on uh, kind of understanding how bikeable and walkable is Naperville. Where are their gaps? How can we get more people involved in, in the, the existing infrastructure? What, what would keep people from, from biking? Uh, so we're early on in that, but, but uh, pretty exciting stuff. We've got some good partners and some good input already. And then third is, is a goal here for the city itself is for our fleet is to transition at least 60% of the municipal light duty vehicle fleet. So cars, pickup trucks, um, you know, transits, non-heavy duty vehicles, basically. I uh, want to transition at least 60% to alternative fuels like compressed natural gas or renewable natural gas, hybrid electric, and or fully electric vehicles by 2030. All right, moving on to natural resources. So one of the things that, that the city has uh, a long history of is working to plant more trees than we lose. Uh, there are a couple of years in there, I think uh, around 2011, 2012, maybe 2012, 2013, where we lost a lot to the emerald ash borer lost a lot of ash trees. But in the years since, in the years prior, we were always in the positive balance of adding more than we're removing. Uh, and as evidence of that, in June of 2021, Naperville and, and some of our neighbors experienced a pretty severe rash of tornadoes. We lost a fair amount of trees. A lot of people had some home damage. Uh, thankfully, uh, it wasn't worse than it was, but still difficult. Um, so we worked with, in, in the aftermath, not only on, on a plan from uh, public works and forestry to be able to uh, remove the stumps and safely get rid of uh, you know, trees that we've lost, but also uh, partnered with Morton Arboretum, the Chicago Region Tree Initiative, and uh, some of our other neighbors got into this as well, and we received some grant funds to help cover the, the cost of replacing even more trees. Uh, we are currently working to develop a program that would incentivize the use of electric lawn equipment in favor of the older, dirtier gas powered equipment, whether mowers, uh, blowers, leaf blowers, edgers, trimmers, we're still defining what, what's gonna be part of that incentive program, how's it gonna work, uh, but we're on the way. And it'll, it'll definitely be um, cleaner air in the neighborhood and probably less noisy for, for calls like this. And then, uh, Next, we're working to figure out, we're working with groups like NEST and the Conservation Foundation. I'm working on, on the city end with uh, the TED Department and the Department of Public Works to figure out where we can replace some turf grass that you would have to mow and maintain with native plants and deep-rooted plants that um, 
in my, my perspective, are more attractive, but they also absorb more stormwater and can help sequester greenhouse gas emissions. And our final category for our brief overview is waste and recycling. So as we've talked about, the city operates uh, free drop-off facilities for household hazardous waste uh, and electronic or e-waste. Now I've got to back that up and say, there is a small fee for electronics that have screens. So televisions, computer monitors, things like that. Uh, that portion of the program, there's a third party vendor that does charge for that. Um, but otherwise everything else is free. We want to make sure that people have access to safely and properly dispose of things that, that should not go in the regular trash or regular recycling, or even just on the side of the road for scavengers. Uh, we continue to work to provide education resources to promote recycling, uh, both uh, traditional single stream recycling through the uh, residential cart program, but also through composting. And I'm working to continue to try and improve our own city operations. And I'm working closely with some of our special event operators to try and uh, you know, boost the good things they already do and, and try and reduce waste from that rich uh, tapestry of events that we host. And finally, uh, Nest actually has news. They've got a new youth team, which consists of, uh, I believe started by high school students. Uh, it's open to college students as well, if I'm not mistaken. And the team is already kind of galvanized around uh, an initial focus. And, and they're really concerned about single use plastics, the use of them, proliferation, and also the resulting pollution. And I've had opportunities to meet with them a couple times virtually and in person. We're working with the NEST uh, Waste and Recycling Committee as well, and trying to figure out what, how can we help them drive their narrative and, and make the connections in the community to, uh, to get their message out. So that was the overview of, of, of kind of what we're working on. I have a couple slides here uh, that I like to present. This is a newer presentation for me to try and kind of pull different parts of for, for different folks as it might apply to them. Um, so for, for a residential audience, how can you help? A uh, number of options here, just top six uh, or just a basic six. One, use native plantings and consider pollinators and butterflies as you work on your yard. You can purchase a, a smart thermostat to help regulate the temperature in your home uh, when you're there, when you're not there, maybe when you're sleeping. And there are rebates from the city uh, toward the cost of a smart thermostat. Another way is to reduce waste overall in your household, uh, both by recycling properly. We wanna make sure that people are not contaminating the recycling stream um, and also compost what you can if you're able to. Another way is to participate in the renewable energy program through the Renewable Energy Fund and consider installing solar power. We've got financial help for that. Very similarly, we have uh, access to incentives for energy efficiency. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about these incentive programs toward the end. Um, and then again, we want people to, as they're able, as they're comfortable, uh, drive less if you're able, bike or walk, or consider taking the bus or metro, carpooling, combined trips when you're uh, picking up the kids from school or going to an event and also need to get groceries. And now for businesses, just a, a snapshot, many of these things are similar. So the same thing uh, with energy efficiency grants and solar power. Uh, also with recycling, I, I think it's, it's a good idea for businesses to consider not only um, providing recycling, easy access to recycling op options for their customers, but also for their employees. They can consider planting trees and native plants if they have landscaped areas in their parking lots or on their property. Uh, another way is to work to leverage financial incentives, both through the city, but also much more funding, uh, hopefully coming down the line from, from the, uh, the federal infrastructure bill and the CJA bill that came through the state of Illinois last year uh, to install vehicle electric vehicle charging stations for use both by customers when they're, they're at your business, but also by employees when they're at work. And just another option is, is to consider providing incentives for your employees who choose to walk, bike, or use public transit going to and from work. 
Okay, so we've got some more to the presentation, but the, here's a just a quick look at, at what's next right now on the horizon for, for the city. Uh, one, uh, the city has conducted uh, multiple greenhouse gas emissions inventories over the years. It's been a while since we've had a verified third party inventory and, and we think it's really important to do so, so that we can measure first where we are, establish a baseline, see how that compares to past, and then uh, be able to track our progress as we, as we implement more initiatives and work with partners like Nest and others, um, we wanna be able to measure our success. And then also we're gonna be hiring a second person to work with me on sustainability here in Naperville, which is uh, very exciting. It, it was a, a very positive surprise during budget season to know that this was being considered. Uh, we're in the process of writing the job description now and hope to have somebody start uh, during the summer. Okay, so I'm gonna take a quick pause here and I, I'm gonna um, throw it to you, Susan and Becky for a moment. I've got several slides here that are, they look very much the same, but I wanted to be sure that I've got descriptions of the different uh, incentives available to residents through uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy programs. I wanted to be sure the links were also there. So it's three or four slides of, of that look like this. Um, what do you think, should I, do you have any questions or wanna make a comment before I get into this or should I dive right in? Um. Ben, I dive think right you... in. dive right in, Ben. Yeah, please do. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about this. Um, we do have a, an incentive program to provide a rebate for residential utility customers uh, who choose to purchase a smart thermostat. It's a great way to regulate uh, when you're not thinking about it or even when you're gone. There are also incentives for installing an electric vehicle charging station. Uh, different levels um, of, of funding, um, $700 for personal use uh, or $500 for community use. Uh, like I mentioned, the Renewable Energy Program and Fund, uh, there are incentives available to residents who are interested in, in installing solar on their roof or on their property or, or a uh, solar thermal system to heat your water. the energy efficiency grants. So there are a number of different programs um, that you can apply for grants, grant funding. Uh, it, it, this specifically relates to energy efficient uh, attic insulation or replacing older single pane inefficient windows that let all the cold in or, or, or the, the, the cool AC out during the summer uh, with, with more efficient double or triple pane windows. Uh, there's another option coming up in just a moment. Uh, there are rebates for um, replacing your central air conditioning unit with a, an energy efficient uh, model with a SEER is just an efficiency rating system. The higher the, the number, the more efficient the system is. Uh, now, this is something I need to get clarification on. There was a, a published end date to this. I think it's just the cycle, though, and that's April 30th, so it's just an a couple weeks, but um, I do believe there will be a new round of this. Um, but if there are any questions, certainly feel free to reach out and I can uh, do some homework on that. And then referring back to uh, the energy efficient, um, energy efficiency grants in the same category as furnace blower upgrades or your current air conditioning unit tune up, um, that is an option through the energy efficiency incentive program. And I'll also point out uh, NICOR gas has a, uh, a lot of great incentives, uh, both for businesses, but also for residents. Um, for residents specifically, uh, they offer a lot of free products. They, they offer free water saving kits, free home weatherization kits, uh, free home energy assessments to try and figure out, all right, where is the, uh, where's the seepage? Where, where do we have a bad window or uh, the envelope is, is compromised? Um, but they also, they also offer discounted prices on things like those Nest uh, smart thermostats uh, and also advanced power strips. Now, uh, advanced power strips are better than your average power strip where they can act actually a lot of um, devices and appliances in your home, let's say televisions, computers, other things, 
even if they're turned off uh, for active use, they're often on standby mode. And what, a, what an advanced power strip can do is actually cut off that power when the unit is off to save energy when it's when it should really be sleeping. So there, there's a link as well to some of those opportunities through NICOR. And I think next, yes. So here we are, I'm close to the end of the presentation. We are approaching Earth Week, Naperville 2022. Uh, and this year, Earth Day is on April 22nd, which is a week from Friday. It is the 52nd anniversary of Earth Day. And the city is working with our, our partners, uh, the Naperville Park District, the Forest Preserve Districts of DuPage and Will Counties, Conservation Foundation, NEST, and Three Fires Council. Uh, we're celebrating with a series of events and programs, volunteer opportunities. Uh, we've got, I've got a link to the, uh, the Park District is the main website for, for all of the activities leading up to and including Earth Day and the Earth Day Fair. And there is also a, uh, a link for volunteer opportunities to get involved in. And we've got a couple events just to highlight. Some of them we've already passed, like the, the Arbor Day tree sale. There were some other things that were pretty fun, a recycling event in Lyle that happened in March. So coming up this Saturday, there is a free paper shredding event uh, at the Fort Hill Activity Center on Fort Hill Drive. And uh, from 8, 8 to 11 a.m., residents can bring up to two boxes of documents to be shredded and recycled for free. Uh, I, I have been told that the truck can tend to fill up. So not to say rush to get in line early, but um, it's only gonna be offered until the truck is full, uh, but no need to exit your car. You can, you can bring as much as you've got up to two boxes for secure shredding and recycling. And the, the main event for many of us is the Earth Day Fair, which is gonna be happening on Sunday, the 24th of April, also at the Fort Hill Activity Center. Uh, it'll be from one to 4 p.m. officially for the exhibition being open, but I do believe there's a little bit of um, educational programming that's happening, maybe starting a little bit earlier and maybe going a little bit later. We've got a lot of good presentations, a lot of exhibitors, we've got some good sponsors. It's gonna be a, a good opportunity to, to interface with, you know, I'll be there with some some free LED light bulbs and some, um, you know, some handouts for, um, you know, links to incentives and things like that. We'll have, Nest will be there. We'll have the Illinois Solar Energy Association. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Clean will be there. We've got uh, some of our sponsors, our Groot Industries, our, our waste and recycling contractor is going to have a bunch of stuff focused on recycling, composting, and reusable materials. We'll have NICOR Gas presenting on energy efficiency. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, exciting solar companies that are going to be presenting as well, Gain Renewables and, and Wind Free Solar. So. Uh, I know that I'm not, I know I'm missing organizations. Uh, I don't mean to, but it's going to be, we'll have close to 30 organizations represented. Uh, it'll be a great activity to to come out uh, with your family, just on your own. And uh, yeah, learn about what's happening. And that's my presentation. Becky, you're mute. Thanks, thank Susan. You. Thank, thank you, Ben. Now we've got some questions for you. This is not a game of stump the presenter, but we do have questions for you. Question number one, how much of Naperville's electricity comes from coal power? That's a good question. I know it's top of mind for many people here um, for good reason. Um, as of 2021, the, so our, electric, uh, our provider of electricity is, the, is IMEA, the Illinois Municipal Electric Agency. And as of 2021, their annual report, it turned up to be around 89% coal and 11% renewable. Uh, and I've got some updates though. The, the reason I referred back to 2021 is that there are already things in motion to, to change that balance a little bit. Uh, there is 21% there of that overall uh, coal. So um, out of the 89% that is generated by coal, 21% of that was part of a contract with a company called Vistra. And that contract was through, I believe, 2026, maybe 2025, but um, the city worked with IMEA to uh, essentially end, an, end that contract early. We're, we're leaving as of May 31st of this year. That 
coal power is coming out of the generation mix, and we've received a formal commitment to from IMEA to pursue renewable or non-carbon focus. So maybe some nuclear uh, ways to um, to bring on more power to replace that coal that is leaving us. We have to get our electricity from somewhere, huh? Another question we have is about the household hazardous waste drop off that's available in Naperville. Is that available only to residents of Naperville or can other residents of neighboring communities also use that household hazardous waste drop off? It's a great question. I'm going to open up. I, I just want to make sure I have this right, but I'm pretty sure it's open to all Illinois residents because we, our partners in that site are um, Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, I believe uh, DuPage County, Will County, and Kane County in the city of Aurora. Um, so let me just make sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, ben, actually, I, I can answer that because that's um, once a month right after church, I go uh, <laughs> to the hazardous waste renewal facility and um, because our, our church collects hazardous waste. And yes, it is a statewide um, it's also supported by the state as well as neighboring counties. Naperville is the largest um, hazardous waste uh, collection in the entire state. Rockford is second and anybody um, can come and use it. They will ask you what county you are from in order for statistics. But I have seen... Um, <sighs> I don't know where the painters come from, but they come with their trucks and there are, there's tons of stuff in there. So it's very interesting uh, to go there on a Sunday and see what's being uh, recycled. Uh, a note of caution, they do not take any batteries that are A, AA or AAA. Okay, Ben, next question. You talked about a possible lawn equipment swap swapping out gas power lawn equipment for electric. Will that be available to commercial lawn care companies as well as private residential homeowners? Right now we're, we're, we're figuring out how everything is gonna work both from the financial incentive side of it and then also, you know, how can we, can we leverage our, our HHW site to safely dispose of the older gas powered equipment Right now, they're not a, they're not set up for that, and we've got to figure out with our partners if we can do that. Uh, but at least we want to get the ball rolling and encourage people to, when they purchase uh, a new piece of lawn equipment, to purchase electric. Um, I do believe that we'll we'll definitely focus on Naperville residents to start. I'm not sure what that means for the future with commercial. Um, I would hazard to say I I would see it being focused on residents for quite a while, if not forever. All right, um, Pamela, did you have a question? Your hand is up. Pamela, do you want to come off mute and ask your question to Ben? Okay, Pamela is not coming off mute, so I will ask my next question. Is it worth people transitioning to electric vehicles when so much of our coal power is, so much of our electricity is generated by coal power? That's a good question. Um, I have heard that there are statistics that prove that uh, emissions are still lower uh, from, from the coal power that is used to power an electric vehicle than it is to drive an internal combustion engine. So um, I'm, I'm not an expert on that, but, but those, are, those are the data that I've heard and, and I trust them. So Nest has that uh, data in the report and we do have an expert in that area and he's on this call right now, it's Bruce Jones. But yeah, he did all the calculations and proved that it's indeed very much worth it to uh, have your electric car, that it does save greenhouse gas emissions. And then also there's a number of people who have solar panels on their house and they have enough to power the charging of their electric vehicle. So they are driving on sunshine. <laughs> And, and that was my source, was the Nest Report. So thanks. Okay, Erin Keebles, would you like to come off mute and ask your question? Yes, can you all hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I just have a question about 
something that I see other towns doing. I, um, I read some of what they have online, uh, how they do some various sustainability. And I'm just wondering if Naperville is considering any of these things. The village of Lombard, they have some very interesting rules to um, help prevent flooding and to maintain um, soil, conserve soil. They require any developer who is doing a teardown and redevelopment that if there is a foot and a half of prairie topsoil on that piece of property, there better be a foot and a half of prairie topsoil on that piece of property when they're done. Um, they don't consider soil a developer bounty that they can run off with. They also require that no lot can be, residential lot can be more than 50% covered in hardscape. This includes the house, the garage, all the sidewalks and the driveway. And so this helps maintain, um, I would say integrity in terms of soil absorption of water. So I was just wondering if uh, Naperville is considering anything like that because Lombard is not the only, only surrounding community that requires that. The other thing that I wanted to put out there, and I, I apologize, I have not read the NEST report, um, so I don't know if this is being considered or not, but um, if anybody gets a chance to go on the Green Built Homes Tour, it's been going on for years and years and years now, it's absolutely wonderful. But one of the things that they do is they showcase how you can front load the house so you don't end up having to retrofit the house later on. And given the fact that, you know, my neighborhood has completely transitioned in the last 15 years from smaller, older homes to much, much larger, newer homes, um, it would be nice to see if Naperville would actually require developers, not gently suggest, but require developers to follow um, certain guidelines in terms of insulation, power consumption, um, not using gas for things like stoves. So I know this, this, this is taking a very long time and I appreciate your patience, but I just, you know, as a homeowner who's now having to try to retrofit, that's super expensive. It would be nice if it were up front rather than later. So thank you for listening. Yeah, sure. I, I I would have to check with. Uh, I, I believe I saw Chris Chris Murphy from uh, our water de department and also Nest um, regarding the the hardscape and the and the flooding prevention. That's something that I'd have to check with our engineers and our planners on just to to confirm. But I do believe that if Lombard's doing it, it's probably something that um, we're either doing uh, independently or or in concert with the county. Um, but if you have further, more detailed questions you want to ask, please do send me an email. Uh, I'm sure I'll have plenty of questions. I want to make sure I get the right answer from the right people. Um, and then also in terms of requ requiring developers to have certain uh, specs or standards for insulation and, and energy efficiency. Yes, Naperville follows uh, the state conservation code. And that is updated every three years according to the International Code Council. And Naperville then is on a cadence, not every three years, but every six years of following the latest version of it. And that not doing it every three is, is a way to manage uh, bandwidth on the staff and, and be able to kind of keep up with things and, and not have to change every three years. Uh, so yeah, we do follow the Illinois Environmental Conservation Code, and we'll be looking at um, opportunities for stretch codes to do even more uh, as we figure out how that looks in the next year or two. Ben, I have another question. We've heard about several geothermal projects in Naperville. I believe one is at North Central College. Uh, what are the plans for any more of those? Are there any incentives available if somebody wanted to bring geothermal energy to their building? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure if, if we've considered uh, geothermal energy in, in our rebate or incentive programs. 
I wasn't aware that North Central had a geothermal installation myself. Uh, I know that they have solar as well as solar thermal, which is to heat hot water for their buildings. So I don't know if maybe it's solar thermal and not geothermal, but um, yeah, regardless, I'm, I'm not aware of, of specific uh, installations of geothermal here in Naperville. Uh, it's definitely worth talking about though, because it's, it's another, well, not really emerging technology. It's been around for a long time, but it could be leveraged uh, a, a lot more readily. Okay, let's take another audience question. Donald Zaninger. Yeah, I uh, was going to simply make the statement that at least where I live in the center of Naperville, they don't even come close to 50% of the yard being uh, open, including the one that's just being built newly next to my, just west of my house. Most of them take almost every square inch of yard and they're being built hand over uh, fist. And it's been that way for at least 20 years uh, since the city council 20 years ago de decided that uh, they weren't going to enforce that though it was asked at the time. And your comment about the topsoil is absolutely true. They scraped the topsoil off, replaced it with something that's more clay than anything else. And the next really big rain we have will probably flood my yard again, and maybe my house. Um, it's not a question, but when you look into it, if you have further questions, uh, talk to Sue and uh, she'll let you know where I am and I'll talk, talk to you about it. But if you look into it, you'll find that there are no requirements in Naperville for the contractors to do this kind of thing anymore. Um, it's been that way for at, over 20 years, at least. Um, okay, Ben, we have another question about composting for homeowners in Naperville. Can you talk about Naperville's composting programs? Yeah, so, uh, Similar to, you know, obviously residents can compost in, in their own yards if they, you know, have the interest and, and ability to do so. But uh, there is a um, subscription-based service similar to your trash and recycling pickup through Groot. And you would have a, a third cart in addition to trash and recycling, and that would be for uh, combined food and yard waste. And so basically what that does, and, and it's a nine-month subscription. It's, I believe, typically March 15th to December 15th, just based on the weather and, and um, seasonality of the yard waste element, and also the ultimate disposal or composting site. Uh, there is a cost to it. I think it's uh, between 185 and 215 or 225 uh, for those nine months, but it's uh, um, either a 65 or 95 gallon container, the same cart, similar cart, uh, to the others that is picked up every single week and it can include only yard waste, only food waste, or any combination thereof. The only restriction, unfortunately, is that um, the composting process that's used by Groot and their contractors uh, does not allow for animal products. And our next question is, if somebody here tonight wanted to get started with solar power for their own home or building, how would they do that? Who would they talk to? I think step one is, is visit the city's website. Uh, go to, you know, there's a, a banner of buttons at the top and, and under the government um, drop down, there's a drop down for environmental sustainability. And that will have a link to uh, our renewable energy program among other things too, and other incentives. Uh, but I, I think visit the city's website and look at the specs first. And we've got the application online and, and tips for how to prepare, how to ensure that you're looking at the right uh, capacity on your systems and going through the permitting process. And if there are questions, uh, there is a contact person at our electric utility who, uh, who does field all of this stuff and works with residents and businesses on their applications. 
So start with the website, make sure um, you kind of got a, a good understanding of where you should start in terms of permitting and, and capacity and, and then also the available funding. And then uh, I, I think go from there. All right. One more question before we get back to the audience. There is growing interest in Naperville and having Naperville only use clean energy and get us out of our coal-fired power contracts. Can you give us an update on that? Yeah, uh, it it's, may not be a surprise. It's definitely not going to wow the audience, um, but we do have a contract through 2035 with IMEA. Uh, that said, um, you know, it's it's not a contract we can just leave, but what we're working on with, with IMEA, as well as with Nest and others and Clean, is trying to figure out how do we work together to figure out where we are and set some realistic goals and track those goals and make sure we're hitting them for moving away from fossil fuels like coal and, and also natural gas um, toward renewables and, and low carbon or non-carbon like, like nuclear. So we're working on it and uh, there is real investment being made. I, I wish I could uh, give you a more satisfying answer, but that's where we are. We kind of have to take a hard look at it, figure out how we can work towards something better. Well, thank you for being honest about that. Okay, one more audience question, Bev, George. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the solar installation panels in Naperville, the 3,348 solar panels. Um, has the city received any SRECs from the state's renewable portfolio standard for these install, installed panels? It's a good question. And I'm pretty sure that's a no because we do not own the panels. Um, we own the land and we worked with those partners, IMEA and, and then the, the solar uh, subcontractors to who actually do the installation and maintenance. Uh, I'm sure somebody did get those wrecks. We didn't because um, we don't own it. Thank you. All right, now Ben, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I'm gonna ask you for your three top tips for sustainable living in Naperville. How can we make the biggest impact? Okay, um, I was ready for this one. I typed out a couple ideas because I didn't want to forget anything. Um, this can be kind of subjective. So I'm gonna take both my own biases and combine them with uh, overall emissions reductions, um, you know, opportunities. And I'd say number one is, is what I work toward and, and I suggest is to reduce waste across the board in your lives. And that doesn't mean just recycle, it means reduce uh, wasted energy, uh, wasted fuel, wasted electricity. Um, so energy, both electricity, but also natural gas, whatever powers your home. Um, try and look for ways to conserve, whether it's as simple as turning off lights when you're when you leave the room, um, or adjusting that thermostat when you go to sleep, or, or buying a smart thermostat. But find ways to uh, to con to conserve the the fuels and resources that we use first. When you don't waste resources, that you don't have to generate the things that create them. So that's step one, I think, is reduce waste across the board. Uh, number two would be to try and find ways to drive less in your personal automobile. Um, you know, I'm sure that that's different for, for EVs, but those still require power. But but look for ways to, um, to, to get out and use human power, whether it's walking or biking. Uh, if you're safely able to do so, uh, have some fun, uh, be healthy, uh, but also reduce those vehicle miles traveled, reduce, you know, transportation is a huge part of uh, what creates greenhouse gas emissions, both in Naperville and, and throughout the world, uh, definitely for the state of Illinois. Um, other options include, I, I mentioned earlier, combining trips, carpooling, um, but just find ways to, to drive a little bit less if you can. And then third, it, third is, a, is a little bit of a combination. Um, first, I think, focus on, in, when making purchasing decisions, I would focus on local businesses, local farms and farmers, local producers, um, as, as step one for, 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 well, at least for, the, for number three, step one, um, as a way to 
not only reduce the, the embodied carbon in, in transportation and also um, you know, the means of production, but also it, it keeps your dollars in the local community and, re and folks, it supports local jobs, it helps people invest in their businesses and, and expand the, the good work that they do. Uh, the money isn't sent off to, to shareholders or um, you know, uh, stock, stock options for, for the CEO. Um, so that's step one. Uh, that's what I try and my wife and I try and do. We've been big into local and sustainable agriculture and farming for, for years. Um, wish we did better, but we try hard. And in, along those lines, when consuming, when purchasing things, I would try to, to make sure you're using uh, reusable containers wherever possible, whether it's uh, shopping bags, uh, your, your coffee mug when you're, you're out and about and stopping into Starbucks or a local coffee shop. Um, most of them, many of them will, uh, will refill your reusable mug. Maybe they'll even offer you a discount for bringing it in. Uh, that way you're not tossing out a cup every time you, you have a cup of coffee. I drink a decent amount of it myself. Uh, same thing when it comes to water bottles and, and iced beverages. Uh, so many ways, so many different um, containers to use for water and, uh, and cold beverages these days too. So uh, shop local, support your local businesses, and, and do it in a reusable fashion. All right, we have one final question here from Cheng Mei. Cheng Mei, do you want to come off mute? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Ben. Um, I have one question and one statement. Uh, the first one, the question is regarding those items or the challenges that you ask the resident or business to take on or to help, how we can help. Have you set up a matrix to measure the progress for each one of the items? As of yet, I have not, no. Um, I, like I said, I'm still pretty new here and uh, there are different ways of measuring uh, the impacts that you, can, uh, that you can see out of different types of strategies like that. And I've been work talking with Nest. They've got a, a good resource from the city of Ann Arbor. Um, I just don't have the bandwidth to get that granular with data at the moment without a little bit more help. So uh, the good news is I do uh, anticipate having a second sustainability person who will help with that sort of uh, data dive and analysis and, and reporting of that data uh, in, the, in the coming months, if all goes according to plan. That would be great. Okay, thank you. This, uh, the second one is only a statement. You mentioned that because the uh, tornado um, last year knocked down so many trees and very glad to hear from you that the city has planted more than 200 plants. My statement was most of those trees knocked down, at least they were 50 years old. So I understand when you plant the new one, they are only like even less than one inch of the width. They are probably less than three years old. So from the benefits that the Naperville residents will get from trees, in totality, we are actually losing some of the benefits. So, but I understand when you plant trees, you have to start from small, uh, but I hope that if that you know, in the future there is any opportunity, we can plant more than what we have lost. That's just a statement. So thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you. Excellent point. All right. Before we end the program, I want to say that you can reach Ben at 630-420-6087. That's his city phone number. Or at Mulesness B, that's M J O L S N E S S B at Naperville.il.us. Thank you all for being here tonight. If you want to stay on after we close, maybe 10 minutes more, you can chat a bit more with Ben. But for me, this is dinner time. Next month, next month, join us Wednesday, May 11th at 7 p.m. for our next event why we should abolish the electoral college. 
Yes, we've tackled this subject once before, but it's time to do it again. So May 11th, 7 p.m., why we should abolish the Electoral College. And Ben, if you can humor us and just stay on for another 10 minutes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone so much.